This video is gonna be split into three parts. Part number one, I'm gonna show you on the console how to delay certain speakers or certain outputs and also how to delay specific channels to make sure everything is in time. Part number two, I'm gonna give you some tips on how to figure out exactly how much delay you need if you've never done this before. Part number three, I'm gonna explain the difference between polarity, phase, and time delay because these three are not the same. And I feel like some people who work in live sound usually use these terms interchangeably because yes they are related and sometimes if you fix one of them it will fix the others also but that's not always true so let's get started to delay the speakers you're gonna go to routing and then go to the right to the out page and each one of these 16 outputs has a time delay in milliseconds but you don't need to know it in milliseconds because you can measure it in feet or in meters and input that number but make sure to turn it on, to click on it, because if you don't, nothing's gonna happen. And as a sound engineer, I highly suggest you actually know that the speed of sound in the air is 343 meters per second, because you're not always gonna have these, so sometimes you need to do the math, and it's pretty easy. Let's say you have 10 meters, right? So you divide 10 by 343, you get 0.029 something. Okay, so that's approximately 29 milliseconds. Let's check if I put 10 meters in here, that is 29.2 milliseconds. That's right. You also have a polarity invert button and this is not phase, okay? Polarity is not phase. This sign is the polarity switch. Polarity means positive, negative. You switch it, negative, positive. Okay, that has nothing to do with the phase. Now, to do the channel delay, let's select the channel. Go to the home page and then go to the configuration tab and here you go that's the delay it's the same thing feet meters milliseconds and make sure to turn it on here's how to figure out which speakers to delay and by how much it's fairly easy so focus with me just a little bit i'm standing on the stage right here and this is the back of the room where the audience sits i have one speaker right here close to the stage then i have another speaker right here that's in the middle of the room then I have another speaker right here, which is in the back of the room. And that is the back wall, okay? That's the end of the room. Which speaker should I delay? You might say this one, which is correct, and this one, which is in the middle of the room, not the front one. Okay, which one of these two should have more delay? The middle one, right here, or the back one? The back one, correct. Why? Because it's further away. The whole point of delaying speakers is to make sure everything sounds like it's coming from the front. So the person sitting right here shouldn't feel like the band is coming from above his head. It should feel like it's coming all from one speaker in the front. I should also mention that if you are in a very big room or a stadium or something with very large distances, you might want to delay the back speakers just a little bit more than necessary to make sure that the sound feels like it's coming from the front because our ears are very quickly drawn to the first sound they hear. For example, you have left and right. If the left speaker is a bit ahead of the right speaker, it feels like all the sound is coming from the left, although both are firing the same exact sound equally. Now, the easiest way to measure the delay, you can just grab a measuring tape and measure from the cone of the first speaker to the cone of the second speaker, and not the enclosure itself, but where the diaphragm of the speaker is supposed to be. And to calculate how much delay is that, we know that the speed of sound in the air is 343 meters per second. So you just grab your distance. If it's 10 meters, you divide 10 by 343 and you'll get that in seconds. Multiply it by a thousand, you get it in milliseconds and that's it. There's another thing also a device that is a laser that you can just grab and point at the speaker and it will tell you the exact distance from your hand to that speaker and that's really good. So take the first speaker as reference from the, your hand and then measure from your hand to the second speaker and split the difference and that should be the distance between them and you calculate it in the same way you divide by 343 and that's the delay now when it comes to microphones let's say inside of a kick drum for example you have a microphone on the inside next to the beater and a microphone on the outside these two mics will not be in sync because there is a distance between them they are not exactly at the sound source what you can do 
preferably you can measure if you want but what I would do is record the two microphones into Pro Tools for example or any DAW and measure in that program the distance between when the first sound hits and where the second sound hits and that's the exact amount of delay you need to apply another thing if you don't have a measuring tape you can do that same thing for speakers where you record it you grab something like a click track or a metronome and you grab a microphone and you record the speaker in the front and the speaker in the back and you see in your pro tools or whatever you see the distance between those two clicks and that's the delay yes i forgot to say the last word because i got distracted by the sound of the pickup track passing polarity phase and time delay polarity simply means plus minus plus minus in polarity minus plus out of polarity so in case of a loudspeaker for example it's like taking the wires from the speaker and flipping the positive and negative leads and plugging it back in so usually the speaker is supposed to fire forward the cone the diaphragm of the speaker is supposed to push forward if you flip the polarity it's now pulling backwards cool now time delay time delay is sound number one sound number two the distance between the first and second sound is the delay how to fix it you should delay the second sound so it's waiting for the first sound to arrive and then they go together cool now polarity and time delay are completely independent of the frequency they affect the signal as a whole whereas phase is completely dependent on the frequency if two different sound sources are playing the exact same signal and one of them is out of polarity with the other this will completely cancel out the entire signal as a whole so nothing null silence on the condition that both sources are perfectly in time so no delay in between them so if you have speaker number one and speaker number two both playing pink noise and they are perfectly in time in the perfect world and you flip the polarity of one of them you will have complete silence time delay on the other hand doesn't make complete silence but cancels parts of the signal specific frequencies in that signal and that is a phasing problem you can think of phase as a time delay for a specific frequency not the entire signal but a specific frequency so if you have two sound sources that are perfectly in time they start both at the exact same time you can still have a phasing problem some frequencies get cancelled and the reason for that may be an EQ or a crossover if you don't know what crossovers are it's a filter that is inside the speaker or on a external processor that decides that these frequencies go to this speaker, these frequencies go to this speaker. So you're, you're filtering out frequencies. And these frequency filters shift phase. That's how they work. They cause a phase shift. And phase is measured in degrees. So you have time delay in milliseconds and polarity in charge, so positive, negative. Phase is degrees. So you may hear the word phase rotation or phase shift. And that's what an EQ does or a frequency filter does. There's no other way around it. Now, you can use a something like a linear phase EQ and that solves the phase problem but causes pre-ringing with it, which is another problem. So it's always a compromise in this case. There's no perfect solution for that. Keep in mind, all these frequency cancellation problems happen because different sources are playing the exact same sound. If you have one speaker playing one sound and another speaker playing a completely different sound that is unrelated to the first one, you won't have any problem with that they are unrelated they don't cancel each other okay so if this video was helpful or you enjoyed it make sure to hit the like button i would appreciate that very much and here's another video that youtube wants you to watch next and here's another video that i want you to watch next click on one of them and i'll see you there